We just got done raking and baling again. Right now they're bringing the bales up. My husband's bringing the round bales over and we have um, a friend here with his bale wrapper. I'll take you over and show you what that looks like. So who used saran wrap first? The ladies in the kitchen or the men in the field? I think probably the ladies in the kitchen. What do you think? What do they look like? Marshmallows. Marshmallows. So my husband used the hay vine yesterday and mowed down the grass. Today we raked and baled it. And then, um, like I said, we have our friend here helping us. He's wrapping it for us. And what these are called then is baleage because the hay wasn't dry before it was baled up. And so it will ferment a little bit and that's called baleage. These three pigs have a butcher date. They're fighting over the water right now. Did you ever see a pig with a smiley face? She has one. This evening I am out in the shed where we have the farrowing crates because I just wanted to talk to you and share with you how farrowing is going so far. On, I believe it was Saturday, the spotted gilt, um, she went into labor. It did not go well. She was having serious problems. All of her piglets were getting stuck on their way out she was getting them into the birth canal, but something with the way that she is built, she was struggling so hard to get them out. And my husband, myself, and my youngest daughter, we both put you know, the OB gloves on and the lubricant, and we tried to help her, but we just could not reach them. We could not get a hold of the piglets to pull them out. We were literally helpless and we felt so terrible but there was nothing we can do except pray that she would be able to get these babies out um, one of them was born alive um, it wasn't well whenever it was born but I did what I could to help it to be revived and she came to and she was lively that day um, but she took a turn for the worse and my youngest daughter took her inside and was giving her milk with a syringe after we got her warmed back up. Um, but she died that night. There was nothing we could do for her. So that sow lost all of her babies. And it's just something with the way that she is built inside that they were getting tight. 
And so we're not going to give her another chance because it's not something that's going to get better if we give her another chance. She just couldn't open up enough to have her babies. So she will likely go, we'll probably market her as a sausage um, pig because she's old enough that she won't be good for a lot of cuts. And she's definitely not one to breed again. Now, the other one um, behind me here, I don't know if you can see her or not. Yeah, there she is. She went into labor on Tuesday, and it didn't go 100% fantastic with her either. Now, she ended up, she had six and four surviving, so that's definitely, six isn't that great to start with, and then only having four survive is not that great. But she really had her piglets quickly, and she didn't have issues. We're not sure why. Half of her babies were stillborn. One of them was because we kept checking on her, but she was having them so quickly. One of them still had um, the birthing around its face. Had we been out here, um, that one may have been okay. Another one was born, and when my husband was out here, and it wasn't really um, lively either, and he said he felt pretty strongly he was seeing like um, the blood still flowing at the umbilical cord, so he did what he could to try and revive that one, and it just didn't happen. He, he sat on a bucket for a while just holding it just feeling miserable because I mean there's really nothing you can do just to try and do your best and it just didn't work out but the white one she has done well she's taking good care of her babies likely she will have another chance um, to see if maybe a second time since she won't be a new mom if maybe it would go better for her we still have two more to go we are hoping for a far better outcome than what we have with the first two, but you never know. We've had good years with pigs and we've had bad years for pigs. So what do you do? Whenever things are not going real very well, what do you do? Do you just sell everything and give up or do you keep trying? I think that's the thing with most farmers and most homesteaders. You just keep plugging along and you just keep thinking and saying to yourself, well, the next time will be better. Next year will be different. Next year will be better. But it's not always better. Farming and homesteading is hard. My husband probably would have already sold the pigs but I encouraged him to keep them because when things go well, the pigs do make a nice profit for the farm. If nothing else is really profitable, the pigs are because they have a lot of babies You can and you can usually sell them pretty quickly. You don't have that much into them and you can usually sell them pretty quickly, so they do make money. They drink excess milk um, and usually they do well. It's not working so far very good for us, but we'll see how it turns out. And happier news. Virginia's calf, Arizona, here is doing fantastic. Down, down here. There you go. Not only is Virginia, or excuse me, not only is Arizona doing fantastic, but Virginia is doing fantastic. I can't even begin to explain to you how pleased I am with that heifer. This is her first calf. And usually, whenever a heifer freshens for the first time and you go to milk them, they act up. They might kick a little bit or they usually don't stand still. 
Virginia has been an absolute dream. She is so calm. I am hoping that Arizona is the same way as her mom whenever she freshens for the first time. I have never experienced one to stand still like she does. Since we're only milking once a day, in the mornings, our calves get the fresh raw milk. And when they're just freshly born, they're getting their mom's colostrum. But later on, whenever it's just milk, we'll give them just whoever's milk. Sometimes we'll hold it over, but usually And in the evenings, they're getting milk replacer, which is milk. It's just dried powdered milk. It's no different than baby formula. A little bit more. Come on. Come back. You got a couple little bits here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Come on. Mama, I think you know the black. So... When I started to tell you, my son came in and I didn't get to finish. Um, feeding our calves raw milk in the mornings and milk replacer in the evenings, whenever we were getting ready to switch to once a day milking, I asked some people in a Facebook group what works for them. Do they hold milk over? Do they strictly feed? <laughs> Do they strictly feed milk replacer or what do they do? Most people told me you can't do both. You have to do one or the other that it doesn't work. But we've been doing both and it's been working. So I guess it goes back to, whoops. You can take people's advice, but in the end you kind of just have to do what works for you and your situation um, and it's working for us. That was my daughter riding her dirt bike. I'll have to get you a better video of that at some point. Maya, I gotta make this one a really nice one who likes people. Mm. I like, which one did you have? There's one that's really, really tiny in there. That's the one I got. I really like that one. It's so little. And it doesn't mean we did doubt of me. <laughs> Our billy goat is singing the song of his people. This is one of the signs that a cow or a heifer is in heat. Now she's not in a standing heat yet, which means whenever they stand still for them to ride them, that is when you want to breed them. But she is definitely coming into heat. They are trying to get on her and she is trying to get onto them. It's lavender there, the brown Swiss. She's the one that's in heat. Love is in the air in this pen too. So we'll be looking for lambs in about five months. Five months for sheep, five months for goats. So that spotted sow was brought in here 
because she didn't have any babies up there, she did not need to stay in the crate. We have two more, like I said, that will be having babies, so she did not need to be up here. She's, she's doing fine. Whenever she recovers fully, we'll go ahead and we'll have, go ahead and sell her. Definitely not the outcome that we wanted because we like her and she. She'd have had nice babies, but I know you're hungry. My oldest son and my husband started working in here. I bet you the little baby pig. Yeah, to put the loose pens in for the other pig. One of them's going to go in that empty crate now, but he's going to get some stone and put down and pour concrete to make a nice floor for the loose piggy pens. We've also used this area for um, goats and sheep whenever they've had their babies. So the loose pens here could be used for that also. Multi-purpose. And so, ever optimistic, we will have calves. We have one due in October. We will have sheep to have lambs. We will have kids. We will have piglets. Life goes on. And you receive God's blessing as he sees fit to give you.